Yeah. Right, it's seven o'clock, so we'll start. Um, <clears throat> good evening to uh, members and guests here in the council chamber and to uh, some members of the committee who are uh, joining remotely and also uh, most of our, our presenters are joining remotely. And also good evening to members of the public watching on YouTube. Uh, welcome to the final meeting of the Recovery from the Pandemic Scrutiny Panel. And this meeting is focusing on supporting smaller local businesses. Uh, the agenda for the meeting is on the Ealing Council website. Uh, so if as a member of the public, you Google Ealing Democracy, you'll be able to navigate to it from there. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting. In order for it to be quorate, there need to be three members physically present. And I can see we have uh, a lot more than that, so we're good. Um, so turning to the agenda, we begin with item one, uh, apologies for absence. Um, so no apologies have been received. Uh, unless anyone knows differently, no. Um, urgent matters, uh, there are no urgent matters. Uh, matters to be considered in private, there are no matters to be considered in private. Uh, are there any declarations of interest? Yes, Councillor Martin, this is your usual one. Uh, usual one, yeah, as Chair of the London Borough of Eagles High Street Task Force team. Right, thank you. Um, and uh, right, item five, uh, the minutes. Um, so the we're asked to um, agree the minutes as a record. I'll go through them page by page, I think, traditional way. Uh, so page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page 10, page 11, and page 12. So I've had no indications. Um, so do you agree the minutes? Agreed. Agreed. Very good. Thank you. Um, so we now moved on to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the main, main item of the agenda, uh, supporting small and local businesses. Uh, so we're going to have um, a series of, of presentations. Uh, so we'll be having, um, so the service officers uh, who will be presenting are uh, Connor McDonough and Fiona Crehan, and the um, expert witnesses that we have are uh, Grace Williams, who's Director Loom and Programme Director, Park Royal Design District, uh, Andrew Dakers, who's the Chief Executive of West London Business, uh, Natasha Patel, uh, your Acton Bid Manager, and Stephen Fry, Executive Director of Westmount Enterprise Hub at the University of West London. Uh, great. So um, I think we we start with Fiona. Is that right? Yes. So, um, oh, sorry. Hey, thanks, Chair. Just might just uh, say a few words oh, before yeah. okay, everyone in. Go ahead first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to be online, but I decided to come in person to see you all. <laughs> so my name's Connor McDonough. I'm the Assistant Director for Economic Growth at Ealing Council. So that team uh, includes business growth and investments, regeneration, and more recently, we've now got employment skills. So the, the really key teams that have been working for the council with, with members and councillors and uh, our vast array of uh, businesses across high streets and, and our commercial areas to support them over the last few years, uh, in particular, as we recovered from the impacts of, of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so what Fiona is going to present to us here is just going to give us a bit of a bit of an insight into the actual uh, what how Ealing's local economy is comprised in terms of its numbers of businesses and its number of workforce, and then some ideas on on the business support programs that we have implemented over the last few years to support uh, those uh, businesses as they recovered, uh, and not least the the work of the High Speaks Task Force and the role it has played in supporting those businesses on the high streets as well. I just want to say firstly, a big thank you to our guest speakers who have given up their time this evening to help us out with this. They're really key partners for us and in, in the work we've been doing over the last few years and helping our business recover and, and thrive. So uh, thank you, Chair, and I'll, I'll hand over to Fiona now to take us through the presentation. Thank you. Good Connor. evening, everybody. I'm going to try and share my screen to share the slides. 
Yes, we can see it. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Love it when technology works. Um, thank you so much. Um, my name is Fiona Crehan. I'm Interim Head of Business Growth and Inward Investment in Ealing Council. And I'm going to share some information with you about our business base and how we're supporting small and local businesses to recover uh, as we go past the pandemic and uh, we adapt to the changing trading environment. So I'm going to set the scene and then invite our guests to share from their perspective um, how they're each supporting uh, their respective local businesses. So as you can see on our first slide, we've got 19,585 businesses and 127 jobs uh, within those businesses. Our business base is mainly a micro business economy as 93% of businesses in our borough employ less than 10 people. Uh, and that's uh, a bit higher than the London average and the England average. Uh, our key sectors are clustered with retail and wholesale uh, as uh, one of our largest businesses by, by the number in that sector, followed by professional, technical and scientific, and, and then my construction and information uh, and, and, and communications. The largest by the number of jobs has similarities uh, with uh, wholesale and retail being the highest, then followed by business admin uh, and support services, uh, public health, uh, health and well-being and, and, and social care um, are, are the third category followed but then by uh, manufacturing and education. Um, some of the challenges that businesses have shared with us, uh, and this is through sector events, the high street task force meetings uh, and engagement with individual businesses, uh, is that um, our, our businesses that were most affected by the pandemic are particularly retail, so high street businesses in particular, including hospitality, also wholesale businesses, particularly as they do a lot of business to business trading and are heavily reliant on hotels, restaurants, cafes, hospitality businesses and our general retailers on the high street. Uh, also, that links as well with manufacturing businesses. The making and production of food is a key aspect of our manufacturing base in Ealing. Uh, and again, the impact of the pandemic had a significant slowdown in trading activity uh, and the sale of goods in that area, except, of course, for, um, uh, for supermarkets uh, that had an uptake in sales in that area. Also, creative and arts, uh, with, with lockdown and the reduction in um, people going to uh, a range of different venues um, that made a significant impact on our different arts and creativity businesses and our aviation our businesses linked to aviation include food production businesses that are preparing um, uh, and supplying the aviation trade with uh, in-flight meals and products and, uh, and a range of different support activities the impact of that mainly is for our high street businesses uh, um, a significant reduction in footfall on, on our high streets and a reduction in, in, in sales. And also, as we come out of the pandemic, the, the relatively slow return to working in offices and for, for our high streets with um, uh, office corridors, uh, that's had a significant impact as well on our nighttime economy as the number of people staying in, in the area to use restaurants and entertainment venues are reduced. With our recovery, there is a return to uh, working in the office. The new normal is very much a hybrid environment. Uh, and what our, uh, many of our office-based uh, businesses shared uh, and also property businesses that are looking at um, the sale and rent of commercial spaces, grade A quality offices is a big factor in um, promoting the return to work, but also attracting and retaining talent. Uh, and recruitment challenges are, are something that is a common theme in, among many of the business meetings we hold. Um, the, the, for, for some of our businesses as well, the, um, the impact of a post-Brexit trading environment means there's a lot more paperwork to navigate uh, as part of meeting compliance and dealing with uh, changes in both importing and exporting. And at the moment, it's easier to import goods into the UK than it is to, to export goods out. For larger businesses, their approach to navigating that change in environment is to have a dual location. Uh, where they have a, a, an office in um, a country in Europe in order to safeguard their market base 
and, and to support that navigation of, of goods and, and promoting of sales. But for our micro businesses, as I said, that's not an option. Uh, so there's a big challenge in navigating that environment, maintaining their sales, but also dealing with the shortage of goods, um, you know, the, the pressure to store larger volumes of inventory to, to meet sales demand, and also dealing with disrupt, disruption that the war in Ukraine and other factors have had on supply chains, the, the delay in importing goods to deal with parts um, for motor vehicles and, and other things. Um, uh, and also the disruption in materials or, or ingredients rather needed for the manufacturing of foods. Um, we've also had a very significant rise in, in overheads uh, due to uh, rent levels being maintained throughout the pandemic. And despite renegotiations of rent for, for many, that's remained quite high, followed by staff costs being quite static uh, and haven't changed very much. A recent increase in business rates, but particularly a very high increase in energy um, uh, bills, be it, be it gas or electric. And particularly for our production businesses with quite high need for uh, both water and for power, uh, that increase in, in costs and overheads is really eaten into their profit margin. And for some businesses, that has meant they've had to close or, or they have to really reconsider um, what, what they can sacrifice. Uh, and for some, that means not increasing um, staff wages uh, in, in the way they might like. Uh, so that pressure of keeping staff wages low, but the cost of living rising is really kind of triggering resignations and, and also difficulty with recruitment. And with the various sector events we've held, um, kind of the challenge with recruitment uh, and also for our hospitality businesses, recruiting and retaining, retaining people is also a challenge because often they come to be trained and then they move on to other businesses. Um, for some businesses also, that, that recruitment gap means a, a gap in skills, uh, particularly for mid-skill mid level, so not so much entry level, but mid-skill level uh, roles, and, and also a high competition for talent. And as I say, the quality of the working environment can, can also factor uh, in how effective recruitment is. In order to respond to these very complex and varied challenges, joint working is really essential. So over the past year that I've been working in the council, we've been working hard to build relationships and joint working arrangements with a range of different teams. Um, so my team is based in economic growth. We have very strong, close working, working with our skills and employment colleagues who are looking at how they can support businesses by upskilling staff, but also supporting recruitment. And we're generating referrals for that. Um, more recently, working with procurement teams uh, in the council uh, to explore um, supply chain opportunities, maximize local buying so we can put more money into our local economy, and also identifying uh, tier one and tier two suppliers that might have subcontracting opportunities. Now, that's not always attractive to businesses because sub being a subcontractor can often mean they're you know, minim minimizing profit margins for them. But in some instances, that can be a real winner. Also working with our sustainability colleagues, uh, given the retrofitting and circular economy opportunities, uh, the recently signed off um, cultural manifesto program means that uh, joint working with our arts and culture team will really help uh, with our activation plans for the high street, but also support cultural arts and creative businesses in their recovery. Uh, and also looking at uh, where the council has underused uh, space and assets that can so support business startup and business growth. Because uh, as I said earlier, competition for affordable workspace uh, is quite acute and anything we can do to support and enable startup uh, will help with that. Uh, and then exploring with our, our customer services team, how we can link and add value to their community hubs program uh, and, and what that means in terms of being accessible to people uh, in Ealing uh, uh, with services uh, available, including employment and training support. Um, 
On our call this evening, we have um, Stephen Fry from the University of West London, and we've been working closely with the university over the past six to nine months or so, uh, looking at how we can support um, and enable startup and business growth. Um, recently, I've introduced the university, the built environment team, to a number of businesses that want advice around energy saving uh, and measures they can introduce uh, into their operation to help achieve savings. And Andrew Dacres is going to talk a bit more about what, what the West London businesses does that, about that as well. Um, with the College of West London, um, uh, Torpedo Factory Group, as, uh, as one example, has initiated a pilot in, in um, film lighting, an apprenticeship in film lighting, uh, which is a, a, an area they focus on as a, a significant creative sector business. Uh, and the universities, uh, the, sorry, the college is also looking at um, green and carbon reduction jobs of the future that are needed and how that can be introduced to, to the training program. Uh, Andrew's going to speak about West London and businesses role with strategic business growth and particularly looking at joint working across boroughs uh, in, in, in West London and what could that mean in terms of supporting innovation, including linking with Heathrow and uh, the supply chain opportunities they also offer uh, with Meet the Buyer event that uh, Ealing and other boroughs in West London take part in. Um, uh, Imperial College and Brunel University also have innovation um, uh, focuses in, in their work and there's a, a range of joint working around our Good for Ealing program uh, and uh, exploring how Ealing can be a place for innovative businesses to start up and grow. Uh, also, as part of Good Freeling, joint working with developers and other employers uh, to promote that, to create and identify benefits uh, for local smaller businesses uh, through, through our inward investment programme. And last year we had um, uh, a business awards uh, we sponsored uh, through the West London Chamber of Commerce uh, as part of supporting and celebrating uh, business in, in Ealing. During the pandemic, the High Street, Ealing's High Street Task Force um, played a really important role in bringing different businesses together to enable them to work together to maximise how businesses can access grants that were available and looking at developing a programme of recovery activities. Uh, and that joint working and, and sharing and, and support was really essential for some very vulnerable businesses that, that had were hit the hardest from the beginning of, of lockdown, uh, reduction in footfall and, and limiting in how people can trade. Within the, the task force, um, there uh, are three business improvement districts are represented. Uh, we've also got the long-standing Pitts Hanger Village Traders Association, um, uh, Hanwell, Hanwell, sorry, can't talk, Hanwell uh, Business Group, uh, which was formed as an association and then uh, I believe it's now represented. So different um, structures ha have emerged um, uh, depending on the number of businesses to come behind it. And we've also got some emerging business networks that are considering the kind of uh, structure they want to have, be it a formal association or just a group of interested individuals working together. So we're supporting uh, Greenford in exploring those options. And also we have an emerging group in Southall and, and some interest as well in Northold uh, and other areas um, in, in, in Ealing. Some of the key challenges that often get discussed in the regular uh, monthly and bi-monthly meetings with the task force is challenges with tackling crime and antisocial behaviour, particularly as in a shopping environment, families and people need to feel safe, uh, staff need to feel safe as well, and, and we have had some incidents of some very um, uh, concerning um, situations of people being threatened uh, and concern about, you know, will they, will they call the police and if so, what will the police do? Um, so the voice of the police and community safety team uh, within the task force has been really, really helpful in highlighting the issues and challenges and also exploring um, solutions and what could be done. Sorry. So um, about a year ago, uh, the council had um, some funding as part of the COVID recovery funds. Uh, and uh, in order to support uh, business growth, the Ealing Pioneer Grants Fund was launched uh, and a total of 12 businesses were identified uh, with innovative 
uh, and growth, uh, innovative ideas and proposals, and also potential to grow and create jobs. Um, so within the, the 12 businesses, uh, kind of some were focusing on food and drink uh, with Ealing Gin that some of you may be aware of. Uh, and the Ealing Distillery uh, has recently um, uh, agreed uh, to be a, a supplier with Waitrose, which will give them access to about 54 stores in London uh, to improve their sales. Uh, Delicious, an innovative company that's looking at um, uh, natural and uh, ingredients in, in their um, food products that they, they bake, uh, par bake and freeze uh, and sell to a range of different restaurants, etc. Uh, but also as a business, they're looking at how they can be more sustainable and uh, reduce those very high energy bills that they're having to deal with. Um, High Waves is a, a green technology company uh, that's looking at uh, addressing some of the challenges in producing green energy and particularly green, green hydrogen is uh, very suitable for industrial and business operations. Um, it, it, the, the price point at the moment uh, for green hydrogen is too high to be of a domestic application, but there's some very exciting opportunities around what it could do to, to support businesses. Uh, we've got some other technology-based companies with agile technology looking at uh, different ways of enabling shopping. Uh, Go Create, uh, again, uh, based in the University of West London, uh, has an innovative approach to um, how music training and exams can be delivered online and what does that mean in terms of safeguarding and safety for uh, young people in particular that take part of that. Uh, Torpedo Factory uh, is a great success story as an audio, uh, audio visual specialist. Uh, they've recently merged with a, a German architecture firm and uh, now they're, you know, technically they're now probably the biggest business uh, in Ealing following that merger in March. But they're very interested in looking at smart building technology as a way of the future and with that merger of an architecture firm looking at uh, cutting edge design linked with audiovisual and and smart tech in buildings it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what what they do going forward and they're creating a visitor facility uh, in their premises in park royal so that people can come and see what smart building tech is all about so very much committed to staying in ealing uh, and also contributing to promoting training and education. Uh, BMI as camera technicians are looking at some uh, innovative uh, apprenticeships uh, and they're, work they're the one working with um, uh, West London College. Uh, Queen's Roller, a an affordable workspace provider that uh, kitted out um, the their building and increased the access to affordable workspace with events and activities uh, in, the in that premises. And then Imaginarium's looking at um, uh, capturing uh, and finding new ways to tell stories using technology. Uh, and of course, the last one there is Cultivate London, looking at growing food and composting uh, and creating jobs uh, through, through that environmental programme. As we support our businesses to grow, uh, we're actively in conversation with a range of different businesses through our sector uh, events to explore how we can support different types of businesses. And in looking at supporting retail and hospitality, we're looking at how the pressure on people's pockets and, and the cost of their weekly shop uh, could actually benefit smaller businesses where customers are looking for the little and often shop uh, and maybe taking some of that business away from uh, supermarkets. Um, with wholesale logistics and manufacturing, we'll be looking at uh, what who their customers are, what those customer priorities are, how they could optimize and, and reduce some costs in their operation and supply chains, uh, and also in, in terms of looking to the future, how they're articulating their sustainability um, efforts and helping and using that to inform their marketing. Uh, with built environment businesses, including a range of different construction, uh, green installers uh, and allied professionals, looking at how we can support them with accessing new build and retrofit markets, uh, particularly given the net zero agenda, 
uh, has some key dates coming up, particularly with rented properties and what that means for the energy rating uh, and the need for landlords to look at retrofitting uh, so that they can continue to, to let those properties and be compliant. Um, innovation and net zero is going to be a, a strong theme with every sector. Um, so we'll be exploring with them what markets do the businesses need to go for and how can we best prepare them for that. Uh, and essentially exploring how can we promote investment in manufacturing in the UK. Foreign direct investment is coming in for you know, building facilities as part of the property market. We don't have as much investment coming in from manufacturing, uh, and particularly as most of our manufacturing businesses are our family owned small operators, how can we enable them to access uh, finance resources to support their growth? Uh, and as I said, net zero is going to be a huge agenda going forward with legal commitments the country has to reach and a range of different targets in different sectors uh, affecting different businesses. So in some cases, it means a phasing out of gas boilers, for example, by 2025. And, you know, what's going to replace that? Electricity is, is likely to be a big part of it, um, but it'll be very interesting to see what other options uh, are available and what does that mean for uh, our, our gas fitters uh, retraining to uh, adapt their business to these new challenges and then of course with new vehicles and the green agenda you know all new vehicles will have to be green by 2030 uh, and therefore if you want to buy a petrol vehicle it'll be second hand or, or, or much older. Um, another major initiative that um, uh, took off since the launch in September last year, uh, which is a partnership with the uh, Old Oak uh, and Park Royal uh, uh, Development Corporation, um, is the creating a creative enterprise zone in Park Royal. Park Royal is, is known as a place for food production and manufacturing of different kinds. But within that, we also have a cluster of creative businesses that, and, and that cluster wasn't very visible. So with the Creative Enterprise Zone, we're raising the visibility of our creative businesses, many of which are micro businesses and small startups with really great uh, growth potential, including businesses that are looking at recycling uh, and reusing materials. And for example, that the, the purple seat there, Crum Royal, uh, making seats uh, for public realm out of 100% out of car, uh, old car tires. And then uh, a pig uh, using a pigment that can stand up to UV light uh, to actually create colourful uh, dynamic products. Uh, and the company that makes that uh, often does it through community engagement activities and very much linking with the wider community. And that's an aspiration we have for the Creative Enterprise Zone and, and building on the partnership working that uh, the, the task force has uh, has uh, has been doing for the past few years. The Creative Enterprise Zone Cluster are building relationships with the wider community. So Park Royal as a cluster of businesses is a place where people are encouraged to come and visit and explore and find out what they're doing and also building relationships with, um, with Acton, uh, with the W3 Hive, um, circular economy project that was set up in a previously vacant council owned retail unit on Churchfield Road. Uh, they launched in November last year and they're now uh, selling uh, products that might otherwise uh, go to waste. Uh, they've got training and education activities hosted in the shop where people learn how to make things out of um, uh, kind of products that might, might be cast aside otherwise. Uh, and they're also exploring how they can support and provide shop space for creatives in Park Royal to showcase their wares and sell to customers. So making a link between high street and industrial um, base uh, to, to support recovery. Um, Ealing Council has been awarded um, just over 2 million funding under the UK Shared Prosperity Fund programme that the GLA is leading on. And we have under two themes, uh, we have funding for a range of different actions that primarily focus on supporting high street recovery activating underused assets, uh, improving the quality of our public realm spaces, uh, including with festive lighting that is up year round to enable the celebration of different community events, not just Christmas, 
but also in doing this, we can capitalize the cost and help reduce some of our annual uh, costs, costs for events. The approach to um, events and public realm improvement is very much involving the community in the process of creating uh, what goes on our high streets and through that encourage footfall, encourage civic ownership uh, and, and promote our high streets as great, great places to, to spend time on. Uh, we're also match funding a small project that our regeneration team have secured uh, for Southall Square uh, to create a, a, a lovely new public realm space uh, with parklets, seating and, and a location for, for the market. Uh, we're also looking at borough-wide platform for an events program. So across the year, we build on the comedy and jazz festivals, but we have other events that reflect our diverse and amazing communities in, in Ealing uh, and that appeal to as wide an audience as possible. So people are encouraged to come and experience these events on our high street and continue to support that recovery. Um, the, the approach to developing the events will include joint working with, uh, for example, the University of West London's media school uh, have, um, are integrating the creation of videography contact into their coursework. So we'll have some students helping to record activities and generate content for social media to in turn help with place promotion. The second theme under UK Shared Prosperity is supporting local business. And as a, a key part of that is supporting startup and addressing the difference we have between female employment and male employment and female entrepreneurship in the borough, where we have a 10 percentage point, uh, point difference uh, between employment levels. Uh, and with this project, we really want to target women entrepreneurs and encourage those with an entrepreneurial idea to come forward, to, uh, to access support. And in order to make sure we reach the people who would most benefit from this, uh, joint working with our housing associations and community organizations will be key to promote that message uh, and exploring how, for example, our entrepreneurs can you know, start up on the local market or find ways to start selling um, what, what they're offering. Um, or if they decide that actually setting up a business isn't for them, but they've learned a lot in the process, um, the aim is to make sure that everyone who takes part um, has a plan to access employment, be it starting a business or getting a job. So whatever the outcome is, it's positive. Uh, also through the supporting local business theme, uh, we'll be looking at different business sectors, uh, looking at how to guides and different supports that businesses say they want. So businesses will tell us what they need and then we'll uh, uh, put together the materials, the content, the advice, etc. that's needed. Uh, and also looking at thematic support such as sales and marketing. That's the top request that every business has asked for. Uh, help with developing their sales and marketing plans, including looking at how to export uh, and access international markets. Uh, networking is so important for businesses to come together and support each other uh, and also meet the buyer events. So we broker introductions and bring buyers and suppliers together to help them connect. Last week, I, I had a visit to HS2. On Friday, I met with a procurement uh, officer there who's keenly looking for local businesses uh, they can invite to quote uh, for a range of different works uh, that they need uh, over, the, uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, and this will help them improve their local employment and local spend targets. Uh, so there'll be a range of joint working with developers, with HS2, with OPDC, uh, a range of different public sector organizations as well, uh, and also council purchasing too. So organizing events to bring those different players together and uh, commission and appoint suppliers to deliver uh, the training and support needed. 
So just my last slide is for the next steps, uh, we're in the process of appointing an organization to, to deliver the startup support uh, and that should be complete and we're able to make an announcement um, after the end of this week. Uh, we've are currently inviting um, business advisors uh, to respond to our sales and marketing um, uh, scope of uh, support needed. And uh, by the end of May, we'll be able to make that appointment. Uh, we're providing, uh, we're funding a, a dedicated officer uh, to work with our food serving businesses that need help with improving their food hygiene rating. Uh, so this will be a dedicated role to work with the business to get ready to be revisited and regraded. And we'll start with Sautol because we have a cluster of um, food serving businesses there uh, that, need, that need some help. And then that resource will move to other areas. Uh, the Creative Enterprise Zone partners uh, with EX2 are, are due to launch um, an event uh, on the 12th of, of um, sorry, the, I was going to say the 12th of Friday, 12th of May, Friday the 12th of May, and, and Grace will, will, will talk about that. So some really interesting uh, things coming up shortly. Uh, and we also have an ongoing program of, uh, of sector events uh, and uh, the, the work, of course, of the Ealing High Street ta uh, Task Force uh, with planning events uh, program and, and linking with the Cultural Manifesto and the amazing network of uh, community and creative and cultural groups across the borough that want to support uh, our high streets and support recovery. So I'll just stop sharing that. And Great. thanks. Thanks very much, Fiona. Great. Uh, I'm sorry, I might have run over time. I meant to be 20 minutes, but no, that's OK. I a bit longer. Uh, I think you know there, there was a, there was a lot of uh, you know very uh, useful information about all the practical uh, ways that you're helping businesses. Um, so uh, now I think we go over to um, Grace Williams, uh, Director of Loom and Programme Director of Park Royal Design District. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll just share my screen. Grace, are you going to share, Grace, or do you need me to do it? Okay? I, I've got them. Let's. Uh, is that. Yes, we can see that. Yeah, well done. We can see it. Great. Um, so yes, I am um, director of um, a company called Loom Projects and we um, support and deliver creative projects um, across Northwest London. And one of our main projects that I lead is the Park Royal Design District. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about that and how we're supporting the creative community of Park Royal. Um, so Park Royal Design District is into its third year now and um, it's actually been set up as a non-profit organization led by a number of um, artists, designers, studio owners um, and other stakeholders in, in and around Park Royal who either base their um, living or working in the area. Um, and our mission is to support, promote and celebrate the growing community of designers, artists and makers in Park Royal through a program of public events, networking and other projects um, to raise the profile and boost the economic resilience of Park Royal's makers and small creative businesses and to better connect the surrounding residential communities, both new and existing with the hidden cultural offer of Park Royal. So as Fiona mentioned, um, Park Royal is well known for its industry, food production, manufacturing, it's got a rich history of making, but um, the more recent developments are that there's a lot of um, artist studios and uh, creative businesses that are moving into the Park Royal and quite a number of um, the old industrial warehouses have been converted into artist studios. Uh, we, we estimate there's at least 300, if not more, individual um, creatives based in Park Royal, um, as well as lots of larger um, creative companies such as film production, music studios, photographers, and so on. So um, we've we noticed that you know it, these these organisations were doing amazing work, but they were not that well connected with their communities and neighbours. Um, and and we're hoping that through our work we can 
raise their profile, support them and provide a great cultural offer for residents locally. So um, here's a picture of one of the artist studios with um, an event, a walking tour that we led. Um, I'm just going to run through some of the projects we have for this year um, to give an overview. So coming up in a couple of weeks, oh sorry, actually just before that, we have, uh, the first thing to say is we have a website, particledesigndistrict.com, um, which has lots of different features. The main one is a directory of all of the different makers in the area, which it's free for them to join. Um, they can create a profile and the, we're in the middle of developing um, an interactive map where you'll be able to search and view sort of different businesses. Um, and we have been supported through some, a grant from the Creative Enterprise Zone um, funding to, to, be, to enable us to improve that and become, um, make it support the businesses in, in different ways. And uh, we also have a listings page. So any um, creative or cultural event that's happening locally, whether it's one that we're organizing or that our neighbors or community are organizing, it's a way to promote um, and share all of that news. Um, and we also have a series of short films that have been commissioned by a local filmmaker that um, tell the stories of the different businesses. Um, but coming up this year, we have um, a big event in two weeks, uh, just under a week, for London Craft Week, which will be a two day festival, um, including a marketplace. So there, I think there's about 40 different businesses that will be represented, um, all from local area or surrounding areas, um, all focused on handmade goods, selling products that they've they've made themselves. Uh, we've got clothing and ceramics, um, homewares, bags, all sorts of things, hats. Um, we've also got a packed program of talks, um, interviews with some of the local makers um, and, and different topics. Um, that, that anyone can come to. We've got workshops that are available as well in things like pottery, woodwork, um, screen printing. So lots of things for people to come and have a taster. And we'll also be doing some, tour, some tours around the, uh, the neighborhood. Um, so that's craft week coming up in a couple of weeks. And then following on in September. Um, so for the last two years, we've taken part in London Design Festival which is a really great way to raise the profile of these small businesses um, through a sort of internationally recognized platform. Um, and we have had great turnout and, and lots of people coming from all over London, as well as uh, local residents coming to attend exhibitions and events and um, film screenings and all, and all sorts of other showcases. So um, that's a really great way as well to sort of, um, uh, increased visibility but also what we found is a lot of the businesses didn't even know who their neighbors were so they had they sort of knew who was in their building for example but they didn't realize there was hundreds of other um creatives just around the corner in the next sort of warehouse building um and what the ldf program so far has enabled is uh, quite a number of new collaborations have been forged through these events that we've put on and um, the sense of community amongst amongst the creative um, businesses has really increased. And I think that lots of new projects have kind of sprung out of these activities. So as well as those two sort of flagship events, we do have um, a year round program as well of, of talks and films. We've also um, initiated some public realm improvements such as um, making planters out of discarded um, pallet wood that has been found in the streets of Park Royal. Um, and we have a series of other events coming, you know, that range from supper clubs to performances. And um, we've been able to host in the studio spaces that are here, um, music events, um, product launches and other things. So uh, making people aware of, of all of the facilities has been really great. Um, and then a couple of sort of spin-off projects that came from Parkville Design District, but now have uh, created a life of their own. Um, and these will be launched at the, um, the event on the 12th of March that Fiona mentioned um, as part of London Craft Week. 
So we made. Sorry, sorry, 12th of May. Uh, we made in Park Royal is a materials exchange hub. So one of the events that we ran through um, Park Royal Design District last year was a roundtable discussion about how we could reduce waste in Park Royal because there's so much um, industry and businesses that you know produce a lot of waste. And we we found a lot of artists were already using some of these materials to create amazing innovations. Um, so we've actually been able to set up a, a, a hub in one of the artist studio buildings, which um, is a place to collect materials. And then we're going to um, make them available to artists and categorize them and people can kind of come and see if they need anything or request certain materials. Um, and we've also, we've managed to raise, I think just over 35,000 pounds of uh, crowdfunding through Space Hive, which was um, there was a donation from Ealing Together within that, um, as well as other local businesses and individuals. So that's going to allow us to employ um, somebody to run the hub and to make sure that the connections are made between all the businesses. At the moment, a lot of um, our waste materials are coming from the film uh, studios who have you know, big sets and lots of wood and things, which is only used for a few weeks or months and then it's discarded. So we've actually managed to uh, repurpose a lot of it already. Um, some of this artist studio buildings are actually being clad or made out of these, um, this reclaimed wood. Um, and then, so that's, that's one sort of great initiative that's come out of our work and then um, finally, Park Royal Open Workshop, which is um, a new open access workshop that will be available to people to come and learn how to make things, uh, to take part in courses and workshops around um, DIY, woodwork and metalwork. Um, it will be affordable and accessible to everyone. And that's um, also going to be the Creative Enterprise Zone hub. Um, so that will be launching as well um, next week and is a great way to kind of invite people who may not have um, a ready, ready made business idea or a creative project in mind, but want to just experiment and explore and um, try out some new skills. There'll be all sorts of tools and equipment and there'll be a, a process of um, induction. And then once you remember, you can come and um just use the space or or take part in sort of taught classes and lessons um so we're hoping that's a really good way to encourage more small creative businesses to um become established or for people that have hobbies to kind of turn them into into a, um, a business idea as well um so hopefully that's a useful overview and please if anyone would like to come and visit us um do pop down um we've got our website parkworlddesigndistrict.com you can find everything there thank you thank you thank you grace yeah um so I, I should have mentioned at the beginning we'll take questions at the end uh, of all the presentations which is why we're not doing going questions yet uh so it's uh andrew dakers uh next isn't it uh, chief executive of west london business Good evening, everyone. Um, great to be with you. Um, I do have a slightly croaky voice tonight, which I hope will uh, last until the, the end of uh, this over overview presentation. Um, for anyone that's new to West London business, we were established um, as a non-profit um, company limited by guarantee some 30 years ago. And our members work together through West London business to maintain our global economic competitiveness um, and catalyze action for people and planet. Um, the, our logo may be very familiar to, to those of you sat around the table. Um, it's a brand that we co-developed with West London Alliance um, group of boroughs um, and, and both now use as our, our sort of co as our organizational brands. Um, we took the view that we're both quite small organizations. So by sharing the same brand, we'd shout more loudly um, together for, for, for the West of the capital. Our smaller business um, sort of offer, which I think is the, the sort of focus of, um, of this evening's conversation, um, ranges from supporting our, our members um, and indeed a sort of wider su supporter network um, with insight analysis on the West London landscape, which for 
um, businesses starting up or looking to grow locally um, can be very helpful to save them time and money um, and not having to re repeat that local market analysis. Um, we provide light touch business support um, in, I suppose, the generic sense. Um, so through, our, um, through membership and through our um, events program, we have 30 events a year. Um, we support businesses with introductions and, and, and connecting with each other. Um, as Fiona alluded to, funding, also recruitment, probably come at the top of the list for most businesses at the moment um, when it comes to sustaining their operations and growing. Um, so helping them navigate um, current financial support, which can move quite quickly, um, is always a priority for us. Um, we deliver the Better Futures Plus program um, for the Mayor of London right the way across the capital, uh, supporting SMEs plan their transition to net zero. I'll expand on that shortly. Um, we are the host for Park Royal Business Group, which was established back in 2014. Um, and whilst a lot of the day-to-day -day work of the business group is um, focused on fairly sort of day-to-day -day operational challenges, it could be anti-social behaviour, um, security, um, developing the supply chain of businesses locally. Um, by hosting Park Royal Business Group within WLB, we've been able to take on some quite fairly significant strategic challenges um, facing London's largest industrial estate. So we've been fairly instrumental in getting super fast broadband um, investment to, across the estate. Um, and today we're working on energy um, supply challenges that are holding back growth, both Park Royal and the wider West London context. As an organisation, though, we've made a fairly deliberate choice in recent times with um, less resource than I suppose we, we'd perhaps like generally, I'd say, economic development to focus a lot of our efforts as an organisation on small businesses with fast growth ambition. Um, so signposting um, those businesses to incubators, accelerators, knowledge transfer partnership opportunities with um, local universities and increasingly taking them through a new pathway that we're developing, um, the London West Innovation Network, which I'll expand on shortly. We have a number of cross-cutting programmes, and I'll come back to Screen Capital West, which works beneath the radar to um, support inward investment um, across the northwest of the capital into the screen and film sector, which has been an area of um, particularly um, fast growth um, over the past few years. Um, we have just recently celebrated the 10th West London Business Awards at Twickenham um, Stadium, and that uh, will relaunch um, for 2024 in, in July. It's open to a complete cross-section of businesses, um, from micro businesses to SMEs to very large um, enterprises, um, and uh, it's, it's a fantastic celebration of success. Um, a celebration which for the for the leading businesses in West London um, often sees them progress on to securing the King's Award for Enterprise, for example. Um, so, you know, something I would encourage all local businesses um, to, to look at. Um, and then our events programme, which I, I, I touched upon, which is, is very, rare, very varied. Um, and also, I'd say in Park Royal particularly, um, extremely accessible um, to smaller businesses. Um, Fiona gave you a sort of tour de force of the Ealing Pioneers Fund and the businesses that uh, we were able to support um, working as a sort of managing agent for the council um, and delivering that programme. Um, what I think for us was really exciting was that at speed, we were able to take Innovate UK um, sort of processes and ways of identifying um, those high growth um, and high innovation potential businesses um, and to then reshape that for a, for a local um, program. So I think we had around um, 70 applic applications or thereabouts, which we had to filter down um, to, to the 12 ultimately successful businesses. Um, I mean, three that I'm just going to pick pick on that particularly stand out for, and, and excite me. I mean, they all do in their different ways. Um, Imaginarium Studios, based at Ealing Studios, um, is working right the way around the world, um, supporting um, some of the leading um, sort of Hollywood and other other um, sort of investment route productions um, to, in in motion capture and and other sort of bleeding edge um, sort of te technologies. Um, the investment they received from the um, from the Pioneers Fund was to particularly help them harden their business processes. And what that that means is that some of their business processes, because, because they'd grown so quickly, um, weren't necessarily as documented and as tight as they'd like them to be, um, which was actually slowing down their expansion and their ability to quickly pop up their technology and facilities in, in new locations. Um, in, in complete contrast, Focal Sun, now actually rebranded as sort of Hydrogen Waves, um, is working on the sort of bleeding edge of 
green hydrogen, looking at how to maximize the efficiency of um, taking solar and wind inputs um, and through electrolysis, um, converting that, uh, that energy to green hydrogen. Um, and another one, VMI, I think mentioned earlier too, um, through our Better Futures Plus program, which they've also been able to engage in, um, they went up with us to COP26, um, where they were recognized as what, one of two um, leading companies in the whole of the UK um, for their pioneering work on, on net zero. Um, so ab some absolutely fantastic um, local companies for us to all celebrate and support. I mentioned the London West Innovation Network is increasingly the, the pathway that we're looking to take fast growth businesses through. Um, we use a, a, a tool called Bohurst, which helps us um, triangulate between lots of data sources to spot those fast growth businesses and um, the different boroughs that we work in. Um, typically, it's around 150 businesses that really stand out from that broader business base um, that we focus in on. Um, and at the moment, we're in the process of developing um, a new sort of menu that you can see in the middle of this, um, of, of this slide um, of, of nine modules to help businesses develop their um, innovation culture and, and, and capabilities, um, and then to pick off some of the challenge areas for those fast growth businesses and scaling, whether it's accessing um, R&D tax credits, whether it's navigating working in partnership with further education colleges, higher education institutions. Um, for the first time, um, or driving innovation around social and environmental impact goals. Um, these are all, all areas where businesses um, will be at different stages on, on their, their learning journey, and we, we, we put together a bespoke package of support um, to help them move forward. Better Futures Plus, um, I, I mentioned previously, um, de delivered right the way across the capital, but very much um, there for, for Ealing SMEs and micro businesses to take off the shelf. It's just received a new injection of funding from the UK um, Shared Prosperity Fund, um, which allows us to sustain and grow the programme over the next um, two years. It takes a very holistic view of um, all of the carbon impacts, some improvement areas for businesses. Businesses get free access to climate essentials. To, both measure their carbon baseline, but also then um, plan a carbon reduction plan. Um, in recent times, with the, um, the, the sort of cost of doing business crisis that Fiona mentioned, um, we've put a particular focus on the energy crisis um, and helping businesses um, reduce their carbon footprint in that area. So that's where they're creating the time and bandwidth um, to make changes right, right now. Um, we do a number of bits of thought leadership um, throughout the year. Again, picking up on that um, cost of living crisis, particularly for em employees, and we've been supporting employers to better understand how they can provide beneficial loans through payroll um, to their staff. This is something that has been available to businesses for a number of years. It's actually very poorly documented, or was, until we produced this toolkit. So work with a firm of accountants um, to help um, businesses navigate the intricacies of HMRC rules sure that if they did want to go that, that route, clearly better than leaving your staff vulnerable to loan sharks, for example, um, then um, this guides, guides you through doing it within the, the, the bounds of, of the law. Um, it gets into the nitty gritty of draft template loan agreements. Um, so you've got everything there um, to, to put some payroll loans in, in place for, for staff that need that support. And then finally, um, just to say that you know we're, we're a local organisation, but very much with a, a global um, outlook, um, which I think for the most enlightened, engaged local businesses is um, very exciting. Um, you know, we're a signatory to the UN Global Compact. We partner with the Institute for Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability. Um, and two years ago, we got the um, sort of rare accolade of becoming um, a recognised observer organisation to the UN um, COP process, and that allowed us to take a delegation to Glasgow um, right into the heart of the summit, summit negotiations into the blue zone, um, but we remain engaged moving forward. So we are planning um, a, a delegation to um, COP28 um, th th this year. Um, so um, lots more in the uh, West London Business Toolkit that um, local firms can engage with. Look forward to your questions. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Andrew. Uh, so next we have um, Natasha Patel, um, who's the uh, bid manager for the uh, Your Act and Bid. Um, 
You're muted, Natasha. Good evening, everybody. Apologies for that. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thanks. Um, my name is Natasha. I am the bid manager for your Acton Business Improvement District. Um, what is a bid? A business improvement district is a geographical area in which local businesses have invested together to improve their environment. Oh, sorry. To improve their environment, businesses within a defined bid boundary pay a levy charge um, to improve their environment. Uh, businesses within a defined boundary area pay levy charge to calculate the rateable value of their business premises. This is collected and directly invested back into the area to provide, so, uh, to provide support services for its members and platform for the business to work together, invest services in special projects and events. Your act and bid has recently been voted back in for another five years, and now in its second term, the bid is working to deliver on its new mandate. Your act and bid work for around 600 businesses within the act and bid boundary area. Um, um, our bid covers the in the our bid covers South Acton Industrial State, Acton Park Industrial state and the Vale Industrial Estate, as well as the independent businesses throughout the Acton High Street, Churchill Road and Uxbridge Road. Since being established in 2018, here are a few of the projects that we have delivered in the town centre to help promote in the area of businesses, customers and residents. We have invested in brand new Christmas light wraps, brand new town centre branded bins, flower basket, bike, uh, bike planters, and maintained inherited council furniture such as planters and um, parklets. We have re-landscaped Acton Main Roundabout using local big businesses within the in South Acton Industrial Estate to install a oak tree structure. We've worked with Cultivate London, a local social enterprise to plant the flowers. Um, we have worked with Eden Council to do a town centre art trail on vacant units. Um, this was done through the High Street Task Force um, COVID, COVID funding. Additionally, we have also added CCTV camera on the mount in and in South Acton Industrial Estate. And this is monitored by Eden Council CCTV team. Additionally, we have funded a secure second screen for Act One Cinema that is run by independent um, run by independent businesses as well as uh, residential. Um, it's a non-profit cinema. Create, um, we have created uh, wayfinding maps for Acton Town Centre um, and we have utilised existing information boards that are placed within Acton. We have, create, we have created additional greener spaces within South, South Acton Industrial um, Estate to introduce an area for workers to take breaks. Um, we have also invested in additional deep cleans within Acton Town Centre um, throughout COVID and now. Uh, projects we have delivered to our big businesses to help them rebuild during COVID and help them lower their day-to-day -day cost of running. Our bid offer free pest control for SME businesses and discounted rate for industrial businesses. We have also, also offered discounted offer on waste management with Biffa Waste Services. We offer free training courses in initial in essentials such as emergency first aid, health and safety, fire marshal training, and level two food hygiene. We have offered businesses to remove all shutter stickers from their businesses within the bid boundary area. We offer a free broker service to help businesses find alternative, um, sorry, I'll restart that again. We've offered uh, free broker services to help businesses find alternative um, providers for gas, electricity, telecoms, water, and other essential um other essential providers that they would need to run their business. We've hired a private security company, My Local Bobby, for additional support to businesses to help reduce ASO and retail crime. 
We have also provided a free security radio to our businesses to help prevent crime and help um, increase communication to neighboring businesses. We have also offered, um, we also provide a support to businesses with council related matters. We work with Ealing Council's region team to help promote industrial establishments and help protect them by um, working together to create a bid, uh, to create a master plan um, for the South Acton industrial, industrial state. We also work quite closely with the High Street Task Force Group, um, which is quite beneficial as a bid um, to help voice the businesses' concerns and problems that they have within the town centre. Um, by working with them, this shows that we have we have a clearer um, objective and ways to deliver the projects and concerns in a timely manner. I look forward to your questions. I do apologize, this was quite quick for me. Um, and yes, thank you. That's great, thank you very much, uh, Tasha. Uh, so finally, we have um, Stephen Fry, um, Executive Director of Westmount Enterprise Hub at uh, UWL. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pr presentation less, so I'm gonna take a really short time. Um, the, the university, this is your university. I mean, we're, we're sitting in the middle of the borough um, and, and we're, we're very pleased and, and grateful to be given this opportunity to come and say, we're working with you. Uh, we are a good partnership university and we are working specifically to ensure uh, our strap line is met. We are the career university, which means our focus is on specifically ensuring that the graduates that leave the university are work ready and indeed we push them into those jobs with clarity. Uh, the, the, uh, the feedback from our student surveys suggests they are so grateful and so uh, ensured employment that we're number one across the board in student satisfaction and indeed our student teaching levels. Uh, but my interest, uh, my interest particularly, and I thank Fee for inviting me, my interest is specifically for uh, startups and entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship uh, seems to be a confusing word because it, it's not something that people see as a career, but in fact, it is at the, at the foundation of every career. It's the ability to take risks. It's the ability to be happy and secure to take risks, knowing that they have the competence, an individual has the competence and the knowledge to risk and be assured of their own success. And that's the that's what we inbuild into, into the students as they graduate from the university with ordinary degrees or indeed master's degrees or go on to do PhDs. As a research focus, we also look very fundamentally at emerging, emerging technologies, emerging disciplines and emerging sciences. And we're seeing where we can aid and assist companies locally in those emerging areas, not least biomed. But my real interest is looking at the smaller businesses, the smaller ideas, the ideas which require a little bit of help, a little bit of nudging, uh, which have innovation attached to them. And we've created a model of ideation, which is the early stage think through process. Uh, we call it venture making. Uh, and it's at the hub of the hub's activity here at, at the UWL and certainly within the Westmont Enterprise Hub. The Hub was established uh, in 2018 with Philanthropic Gift and went live uh, in 2019. Well, that gave us a year before we shut down, uh, which was a successful year, an incredibly successful year, which gave us the impetus to pivot and help our startups pivot uh, as, we, as we move them on to a post-COVID new, new reality uh, environment. We are very interested in working with Ealing and indeed we do work with Ealing and are working together in a whole range of different areas where we have knowledge transfer to offer your businesses, to offer the businesses of the sub-region. We're very interested to work with individuals who have that germ of an idea uh, which we can take with us and with them to grow and commercialize. I'm not worried about being called a dirty, filthy capitalist uh, because it's actually about what we do. We turn those ideas into commercial realities. Even during lockdown, we managed to get two companies to market. I was amazed by that. 
but that's the tenacity of the, of, of the and the courage of the entrepreneur startups that we have. We're currently incubating eight. We have 200 members from across West London, the majority of whom are located in Ealing. Uh, we are short leafy uh, to make an agreement to work with you and deliver to women entrepreneurs across the borough. And we're going to be using venture making as the core tool for assisting their ideation, where we can get at least 50 women through the program in 12 months and get 10 startup businesses. We can do that. We can do it really easily. Uh, and you, you will make us and you will work with us and we will work with you to make that happen. We have a university full of talent. Um, that's no surprise. Um, but we also are a university in the center of a talent rich community. It's understanding that talent, bringing that talent into the university, using the skills and the knowledge transfer that we have with ideas, ideation, small businesses, micro businesses, and helping and watching them grow. As companies leave the hub uh, from incubation, uh, we ensure that they are properly funded. So we take them hand in hand to investors and work with those investors to ensure that the best possible deal can be materialized. We have three startups, incubating startups at the moment that are in final conversation. They're all Ealing businesses. Uh, final conversation uh, with investors before they leave the hub, they graduate from the hub and they go live to market with venture capital investment. One of those startups, one of the one, one of those that went live uh, in, in uh, during lockdown, is now sitting there with 32 million pounds worth of value. That's the sort of thing we can do. And we did it during lockdown. We can repeat it. We are repeating it. Our biggest problem, and that is and that is encouraging the businesses out, the small micro businesses out from under their stairs, from under their spare bedrooms back out from from zoom into the real world where we can work face to face with them they're still a reticent to come out and i think maybe that's something we could address together to encourage locational work across the borough not just the not just at westmont hub in 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 in, uh, in, in, in ealing but across the borough so that we can encourage businesses to come out and work together it is that collaboration, it is that work together with experienced businesses and maturing businesses and fledgling businesses where the expertise is shared corporately, commercially between themselves. That's what we do in the hub. We need to make that accessible through the rest of the borough. And in doing so, we will work with you to make that happen. Fee, it's great to work with you uh, and it's great to work with you, Councillor Ball, so that we can ensure uh, that businesses in Ealing get the best of what University of West London has to offer. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, great. So um, I think there's a lot for us to to think about in all those presentations. Um, can I ask the um, the panel members here and online to think of questions? Uh, I'm going to kick off with one, which is um, when we were on the um, the site visits that. Uh, we, we attended, uh, one of the things that came up uh, about three times actually was about crime and antisocial behaviour and what effect that was having on uh, retail uh, businesses. So um, we encountered it in the, uh, when we talked to the manager of the Ealing Broadway Centre and we also encountered it um, with small businesses in Southall uh, where one thing I found particularly striking was the owner of a coffee shop was saying that she wouldn't have been been able to survive in the in the business if she wasn't you know local in the area and and you know knew the uh you know the the the, the families of the individuals that were, were hanging around on the street and so on so it's it's a huge issue and uh, as i say in um any Broadway center it's pointed out that the, the it's actually one of the reasons for staff turnover is that um antisocial behavior in in the center um is is, is causing retail staff to want to leave. So uh, I know um, Fiona mentioned it as, a, as an issue. I know also um, Natasha talked about some of the, the practical steps like radios and so on, but then would do any of the, any of the panel um, like to contribute in terms of, is, is there anything that either the police or the council 
um, could could do beyond what we're doing at the moment to to try to help with those crime and antisocial behaviour issues as they affect businesses. Yana, thanks. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I'm glad this came up because it, it is a recurring topic um, that comes up in individual bid board meetings uh, and that dialogue with the police uh, to kind of raise concerns and speak up on behalf of businesses uh, to make sure that we're getting the level of policing needed, but, but also to articulate and explain how what, what can be classed as low level crime and just they, you know, in some instances, businesses have shared that um, staff were threatened uh, with, with a knife, uh, but the person may not have shown the weapon or it was just a threat, therefore it, it's a low level crime and is it worth reporting it? So actively encouraging businesses to report incidents is key because we need the evidence to, to back up discussions with the police about the response uh, and we need a, a true reflection of that. So engagement with uh, the police at the task force level uh, and also I know it's happening at bid level as well is really important to get that message across. Uh, and our community safety team have um, carried out surveys last year uh, and are actively engaging as well to explore what can we do to make places safer, but also to raise those concerns. So uh, because I'm not in community safety, I can't speak to the details of that, uh, but I know there's a range of conversations uh, taking place uh, to encourage more active policing on, on the high street. Um, and of course, our community safety and CCTV team will be in a position sometimes, but not always, uh, to share CCTV coverage to help with identifying uh, people who uh, carry out crimes, but also uh, find out who they are and support the prosecution process. Uh, thank you, Fiona. Um, so, um, Andrew indicated and then Natasha. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I suppose my reflection looking through the Park Royal lens and our work of work with Park Royal Business Group is that certainly over the past few years, we've had growing reports from our members, um, problems with crime and antisocial behaviour across the estate. Um, I'd say we've also found it harder to engage with the, lo with the police locally over that period of time. So I think we'll be watch watching closely um, that the new commissioner um, sees through on his commitment to get more um, sort of grassroots policing back in place. And that needs to include industrial estates um, as well as residential areas and high streets. Uh, thank you. And Natasha? Um, as Fiona said, it is quite hard for businesses to report crime due to the amount that is stolen. Hence the reason why we are working with my local Bobby and we have funded them to work in Acton Town Centre for four days a week. They work quite closely with the Metropolitan Police, they work closely with Ealing Council's CCTV room, as well as the safer community teams that are held in um, Ealing Council. Uh, the problem is, is educating the businesses, educating them on how to report a crime, um, providing the evidence and also attending court when needed to, when prosecuted. Those are the main key problems that we have within Acton Town Centre is that they report the crime, it goes to prosecution, but they are not willing to go to court um, for either their safety or um, that the business don't pay the time for them to go to court. And so it's a recurrent problem that we're having within Acton uh, Town Centre, but we are trying to educate our businesses on what to do and how to respond to these things, um, as well as working quite closely with our bobbies, as well as the Met Police. We've slowly seen a reduction within antisocial behaviour on the main key areas of the Mount um, and on Churchill Road, um, as well as in the South Acton Industrial Estate, um, what, since introducing my local Bobby within the town centre. Okay, thank you. Um, I see uh, Grace and then Stephen. Um, hello, thank you very much. Um, just wanted to comment briefly on that issue of safety. Um, in Park Royal, another project that um, we've initiated recently is the Park Royal Women's Group, 
and that's actually in direct response to women, especially um, from the creative sector community and small businesses that I work with, feeling unsafe um, in the area because of lack of um, lighting and um, pr just general presence of other people. It's It can be lots of quiet roads and some of them are, are very dark at night. And with the increase of um, events and cultural activities, as well as um, film shoots, uh, photography shoots, music events, um, are just so many women feel like they have to get cabs home and there isn't really enough um, sort of safe routes for them. So we've just started meeting uh, the last couple of months and, and we're, we're, we're going to do a proper launch soon and, and try to reach much many more women in the area. But um, yeah, I'm just keen to hear about any future plans for how safety could be improved to, you know, as we grow the sort of um, cultural offer there and events and things that that could be in tandem, that would be great. Uh, thank you. And Stephen? Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, I, I mean, I, I have no solution, uh, but I'm suggesting that we actually perhaps could look at some of the reasons why potentially young people find themselves disenfranchised. Uh, when we were creating venture making as a, a deliberate ideation and engagement process, we tested it on uh, schools uh, and, and some schools in the borough. And we were working with 15, 16, 17 year olds, uh, building a business in a day or building a business in two days using venture making, uh, using the venture making model. If we could perhaps find a reason for instilling purpose into some of the young people that are becoming our problem before they become a problem, we could solve a problem. Um, I'm very happy to work with your teams, councillor. Uh, to see if there is something we can do to run venture making programs for young people, for potential for young people that potentially are on the verge of entering into a criminal life, to actually try and stop that. Um, if there's an opportunity for us to help and give them purpose, a sense of purpose of becoming entrepreneurs or running a business or seeing the other side of what they're doing, very happy to do that. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that. And that, I think um, we, sh we should uh, we should be able to uh, take that up with the um, the relevant uh, officers within the council. Um, I think that's that's something we could we shouldn't just leave leave as an open offer. I think we should we should put that forward. Um, sorry, uh, Councillor Young. Yes, uh, I think we ought to explore it a little bit further. It was mentioned, I, I think, at Acton, Ealing, and South, all three venues. We went on the site visit as a major issue. It's not just um, major crime, it's, it's sometimes people just being offensive and abusive. Mm. Um, one of the concerns was that people are coming into shops, just picking up a sandwich off the shelf and walking straight out with it, and not paying for it. And that sort of shoplifting is petty and annoying, but it does encourage others to come in and do the same thing. But if you're a business owner, if you're going to go to court, you've got to send somebody, a member of staff, presumably a senior member of staff, somebody's got to take their place. The cost to you is running several hundred pounds. You don't get back or for the cost of a sandwich. It doesn't make any sense. One of the things that they were talking about in Ealing was the establishment of a new uh, Ealing Broadway uh, centre task force, um, neighbor, neighborhood, no, neighborhood policing team, that's what it was called, a dedicated um, um, team for the uh, shops, because at the moment the evening team is uh, rather occupied with the uh, amount of work it has to deal with um, pickpockets and the like in the in, in Broadway Centre. And they get called away to other things like, or uh, well, something's going on on Saturday, I think, they're probably called in for that. So they won't be in the Ealing Broadway Centre at that time, and it's very difficult to maintain a continuous presence. So I think we could make some recommendations regarding the establishment of a dedicated town centre police force. I know that Ealing did employ uh, a similar um, uh, arrangement to Acton's, but only for a short while before Christmas, but it was very well received when they had the extra policing within the town centre. Um, we could also look at whether the police do need to um, have uh, members of the um, public attending the court. 
the disposition will do, then they would be a lot cheaper for the businesses rather than turning up in person to give evidence. Maybe they can do it virtually. There may be other options. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, I mean, so one of the things, um, one of the one of the possibilities is that the police can issue fixed penalty notices. Um, so that's something which can be done without a court appearance. That was something that uh, I raised it at OSC, and that was then the police there were saying that, that that's one of the other approaches that can be taken for um, uh, shoplifting offences of low value. Um, so that would avoid the need for the um, the retailer to send staff to court. Um, yeah, good. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I think well, we'll we'll look at recommendations later. But I mean, I think yes, we could definitely. Sorry, switch myself off. They definitely have a recommendation uh, around that. Good. Um, so, uh, anyone else want to ask a question yet, or I can come in with another one? Uh, not seeing anyone else so far. Um, so. Uh, Fiona and uh, also Andrew and possibly others um, mentioned um, businesses that are um, providing services that that work towards um, zero carbon. Um, so, um, what do you think can be? So, for anyone to answer, um, what do, what do you think can be done to encourage uh, more businesses in that field? So, not just reducing their own carbon footprint, but actually providing um, facilities for, for other companies? Because clearly that's a growth growth area um, for obvious reasons. So what, what can be done uh, to encourage more businesses to set up in our area, providing those sorts of, of services? Uh, so uh, I've got Fiona first, then Andrew, then Stephen. Okay. Um... So, something that our businesses uh, asked for, and it's part of our plans to support business and enable business growth, is access to contract opportunities uh, to, to support their growth. So the, the more we enable SMEs to access uh, contract opportunities that include uh, carbon saving measures uh, that require particular accreditations, uh, then that will help drive um, or encourage businesses to get those accreditations in order to compete for those those kinds of contracts. Um, we do have a relatively small cluster of businesses uh, in Ealing that install uh, solar panels, air source heat pumps, and, uh, and a range of different measures, uh, but the cluster is relatively small. And something I'm exploring is how we can uh, help those businesses access more customers. And um, it, this will include things like um, measures that householders uh, can access, uh, government grants and other things to, to help with the cost of um, installing measures in their own homes. Uh, and what we can do as a council is highlight to um, residents and uh, small businesses that might want to access these kind of services to highlight who in, who in the borough and what do they offer. So it makes it easier for anybody who's thinking about installing measures to find local businesses. And once that demand grows, then businesses will consider, is it worth getting the additional accreditations to be able to offer, offer the, those, those kind of goods, works and services? Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's that's that that sounds like a recommendation um, that that we can that the council ought to uh, highlight which companies in the borough are accredited to to provide um, heat pumps and so on. That that, that sounds like something helpful the council can do. Uh, yes, Andrew. Just briefly to chip in on that, you will probably be disappointed when you conduct such a survey because certainly what we've done at a macro level across North and West London shows we have an awful long way to go in building out that that capacity. Um, so when you know when we do get the demand signal that we need from government consistently held and it hasn't been consistent over the past few years, um, you know we will have a lot of work to do over many years to build out the, the supply chain. The good news is that our FE colleges are getting themselves ready for that when it comes. To go back to your original um, question, Councillor, I'd flag three three bits of the jigsaw. One one is getting the environment right um, in Ealing. And I think Fiona flagged that, um, I think across northwest London, maybe the exception being White City, we have a lack of A-grade office space. 
Um, I, I think that is, you know, increasingly becoming an Achilles heel um, for the sub-region that uh, business, you know, businesses that are growing or indeed are very established are looking for, for top-end office space, often on a smaller footprint, which West London is struggling to serve up. Um, alongside that, you need permeable um, higher education institutions. I think we've got that um, in, in, in West London, from the University of West London to Brunel to, um, to, to Imperial. It's an ecosystem that works together. Um, and then you also need a good, good cultural offer. Uh, and that's something that I, you know, I think Ealing very much has in place, but I do think you've undersold it over the years. And I think there's an opportunity to make it a much more compelling part of your pitch to future um, businesses growing or moving um, into the borough. Because when, when your staff do come into the office one, two or three days a week, um, you want something sticky that's going to keep them around at lunchtime and into the evenings, networking with their colleagues and with um, a wider supply chain. The second point I'd made it make is the need for specialist support if you want to grow the number of clean tech businesses um, in the borough. Um, that's where it's great news that we've got new um, UK Shared Prosperity Fund money going into better futures, um, as well as the bit that West London Business delivers. Um, there's a separate program focused on clean tech um, businesses that's delivered by Imperial College London, Sustainable Ventures, um, which you know can engage with um, deep, deep green technology that's coming through and really sort of handhold those businesses through um, the scale up um, journey. And that's something that you know, that partnership has been exemplary at doing um, on a global scale, but out of, um, out, out of sort of central and West London um, over the past uh, six years. Um, so make sure that you're giving um, due spotlight um, to that business support pathway that is fully funded um, out of UK SPF um, so that uh, your, your green, um, deep green biz businesses starting locally get the all support they need. My third um, sort of, I suppose, steer would be that businesses that are in a pre-start stage, so they haven't actually gone and registered a company's house, they're still sort of developing their, their sort of early concepts for how they might um, respond to the climate change challenge, um, should really take um, as market-led an approach um, to developing those business ideas as possible. Um, you know, both Stephen and I have seen far too many businesses um, start up on, on a sort of wing and a prayer without really having solid evidence that there's um, market need and that they can really see the first customers that are going to give them contracts um, and help their business grow. Um, and with that in mind, um, Stephen and I have worked over many years with Heathrow Airport, um, which has finally got us to a point in the past few months where they've launched Liftoff. Um, which is just that. It's a market-led program um, to help um, startups, fast growth businesses in West London plug into the Heathrow supply chain in areas of innovation. A lot of those are areas of environmental sustainability innovation, but, but aligning with real business needs um, within the airport ecosystem where they've actually got money to spend on new suppliers. Thank you. Thank you. And Stephen. Thank you. Um, well, I, I, at the heart, as, as, as Fee knows, at the heart of um, the ideation development we're doing at UWL uh, within the Westmont Enterprise Hub sits sustainability. Uh, at the heart of the university is sustainability. Um, uh, but certainly with new businesses that start up, we are looking at seeing how the 17 UN goals can actually be built in uh, to the to the business startup idea, both Fee and Andrew have alluded to that already. Um, but we're actually doing that now. Uh, it, it's quite odd, but goal number thirteen is climate action, uh, number thirteen. Uh, but of course, there are the other sixteen SDGs, uh, which we are trying to build into uh, the thinking of the startups, and they are adopting them and understanding what they must do to be a compliant business, a valuable business a business of the community. Um, we've got two approaches to that. The first approach clearly is that there is a compliance issue, that businesses do need to have this, this social view of where they sit with, uh, within the communities that they work and serve. Um, there's the other side of that story, which both Fee and Andrew have, have, um, have, have alluded to, and I, I tend to use the word exploit. Um, those businesses, those startup businesses, need to understand how they can exploit the goals and turn them into market actions. And they can therefore find opportunity for their products and services very quickly and very easily. Thank you. 
Uh, right. Uh, yes, Councillor Anand, if you've got a question. Yes. Yes, thank you, Chair. And thank you, everyone, for excellent presentation. Um, I would. I have a few questions, but I'll just do them in turn afterwards. Um, my first question goes on jobs and the accessibility and how we can improve the accessibility um, from the university leavers um, to get jobs and sponsorships from the businesses. So how we can integrate our businesses and the, the students leaving from the universities. Also, Following on from that, um, we have we're fortunate that Ealing is a very cosmopolitan uh, town, and we do attract international students. How do we, if we do interact with international students, how do we incorporate them into making Ealing their home, and um, how they can also get sponsorships, which uh, the visa requirements actually allow them to do that? So that's my first question. Thank you. Uh, right. Would anyone like to pick up uh, that, that sort of pair of questions? Uh, yes, I've got Andrew and then Fiona. To pick up on the first point around um, trying to get university leavers into the local economy, um, I, mean, I think that's really music to the ears of most local businesses at the moment who are um, struggling to recruit. I think we've probably got some work to do um, in joining up the different um, sort of careers and jobs that are happening um, across the geography because I think for businesses that don't necessarily look, look at borough boundaries it can be a bit confusing when you get approaches left right and centre from different colleges and different universities so something we're doing at the moment through the local skills improvement plan process for West London is to start that conversation between um, the leaders of FE colleges and universities um, to see how that join up might occur but certainly when you know when we advertise part-time jobs fairs for example that universities might put on to our business um, there, there's a lot, a lot of um, footfall generated. I'm, I'm picking up on your second point around international students. Well, we've been lucky enough at West London Business to recruit um, two graduate um, international students over the past um, six months. We wouldn't be operating without them. Um, and the frustration for them and us is that, of course, the graduate visas that they've been able to secure are two-year visas. Um, and so really our ask as an organisation of, um, of, of <laughs> central government is there needs to be um, some realism that uh, you know, businesses need graduates to stay for longer. These graduates may well want to put long-term roots um, in, in our country and goodness, West London's economy is built on, um, on, on, on that um, global um, pool of talent. Um, so we, we need to, to see a change there. Any support that the council can provide, we would welcome and get that message to central government. Thank you. Uh, Fiona. Great. Um, I have a few things to, to share, actually. Um, the, the One of the key points that a number of different manufacturing, production and construction businesses uh, shared was um, uh, difficulty with recruitment, partly because of how their business is perceived. Uh, and, and where they're located. There's a, a couple of businesses based in Park Royal said that it's a real challenge to get uh, quality applicants. And even when they recruit people, sometimes they don't turn up because they come to the area and it's, you know, it's not terribly attractive on the outside, despite what the businesses do uh, to make the in working environment inside their premises um, you know, just kind of comfortable for those who work there with a lot of support and mentoring and various other things. Um, so this uh, th th this has happened a, a couple of times in, in uh, discussions with businesses. So I, I actually had a meeting with our, our skills colleagues, uh, skills and employment colleagues this week to explore how can we identify um, key businesses in different areas to tell their story about uh, what they do, what it's like to work for them, etc., and and integrate that into recruitment campaigns. So we spread the word about what it's really like to work for these very innovative, forward-looking businesses. But the perception as to what it looks like and the location and how how easy or not it is to get there can sometimes put people off. 
Um, so I, I made this suggestion actually at the Park Royal Business Group last week. It was very positively received. And we've since had a, a couple of follow up meetings with colleagues to explore how can we move this forward and come back with a plan for businesses. Uh, and the other point as well is um, a month or so we had uh, go, we had a, a meeting with uh, connections colleagues, the careers advisors. And I asked them how many businesses in Ealing uh, offer work experiences uh, at the moment. And they said the number currently is 400. And remember in my first slide today, we've got 19, over 19,000 businesses in Ealing. So I think there's a real opportunity there to encourage more businesses to offer work experience and to give them advice about how to, what that means and what they would need to put in place. So we've got quality experiences uh, for young people and for adults as well. So kind of age neutral on that um, uh, to, you know, and this will help encourage um, young people who grow up and study in Ealing to consider jobs in Ealing as well, because that's what they want, but they may not necessarily be aware of who's here and what do they do and what it, what's it like uh, to work for them. Uh, and, and just a third point as well, we have had an influx of Hong Kong residents uh, or former Hong Kong residents moving to Ealing uh, and setting up here with their children going to schools. Um, the communities team are working with us to explore how can we broker um, opportunities for volunteering uh, to help them integrate into Ealing life, uh, but also identify you know, possible employers uh, locally, they could go for as well. And I think that's not just relevant for Hong Kong new residents, but all residents in the borough. So exploring, volunteering, work experience, tasters, visitors, uh, visits to places of work as well, will help uh, raise awareness of opportunities, but also the reality of what's the culture like, what are the people like, and the progression opportunities that different employers can offer as well. Thank you, and Stephen. Thank you, Councillor. I don't think it comes as any surprise that, as a career university, this is a, 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 a something very close to our heart. The biggest recruiters of graduates are SMEs and small businesses, yeah. uh, which is why I think we do need uh, to keep our eye very firmly on the ball, uh, and the ball clearly is in the hands of small businesses and SMEs. Um, if we can, and of course, they're, they're, the, they're the very sector that's been hit hardest uh, by the pandemic, um, disproportionately, I would suggest. Um, if we can ensure our support, both as a university and within the local authority, and as Andrew alluded to, nationally uh, with central government, then we can ensure that those degrees are converted into jobs, uh, because the, 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 the jobs are there, we know they're there, but maybe the employers are just not ready to employ. We can actually assist them, help them grow and make them employer ready for the employees as they graduate. Great, thank you. Uh, and uh, Councillor Nand has uh, a couple more questions. Thank you very much for those answers. Um, I just wanted to follow up on um, the conversation about the um, support to the SMEs and the um, Ealing Pioneer Fund and how are we in sustaining that, to uh, keeping an eye on that those businesses that have actually did qualify and their sustainability on actually keeping their business alive uh, going forward. And my uh, part B to the question, so I'm trying to sort of shorten it because we might be short of time, um, is about the beneficial loans toolkit. Um, how are we, how is our comms on that? How are we communicating that to the businesses? Because it does sound like a very useful tool for employers to know about and the comms on that will be very good. And um, okay, uh, I will actually just, put my other question in so that everyone can, and this actually goes on the bid side. Um, during our visits uh, with the, the bids, um, what was actually explained in both Ealing and Acton was that the larger businesses were um, prepared to support the bid scheme, but the smaller businesses, which actually benefit more, 
uh, were a bit more reluctant to come forward. So what are we doing to continuously get those smaller businesses on board? I do understand that we're doing a lot of these things, but how are we actually regularly sort of like supporting new uh, businesses that are coming in and showing them exactly the benefits and how we are continuing that support to them? Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Um, so I'll take um, answers to any of those three points together. I've got to Fiona. Yep. Oh, um, sorry. Can you remind me what the first question was? Yes. Um, the um, sustainability of the uh, businesses and the Ealing Pioneer Fund and how we are actually continually supporting those businesses. Um, that's my first Great. question. Thank you so much. Um, I recently met with um, 11 out of 12 of the Pioneer Fund uh, recipients. Um, the 12th one that uh, I haven't got a meeting with is Imaginarium, and they're just constantly busy, but I'm, I'm persisting. But I've met with each of the 12 with that very intention of asking, how's it going? Um, you know, how are you progressing with your plans? How can we help? Uh, and in each case, I came away with some actions uh, and, and follow up support needed. Uh, and in some cases, they asked for some additional help with uh, their marketing and sales plans, in, including exports, which, which I mentioned in the slides. Uh, uh, one of them, Torpedo Factory, asked for help with um, kind of planning their visitor space so people can come and see you know what smart building technologies is like and actually the university of west london's built environment team are, are helping them with that so we just made an introduction and now they're steaming ahead with those plans it had stalled for a while but it's progressing and and of course um uh, andrew's team are regularly in contact to to check on uh job outcomes and and other targets they committed to as part of the funding um, I've also asked all of them about uh, registering as um, real living wage employers. Uh, so we, um, um, they, they talk publicly about um, how they already pay real living wage, but registering with the um, Real Living Wage Foundation is a way of expressing that and supporting the, the council's um, wage improvement uh, campaigns, etc. So all of them have committed uh, to progressing with that and any actions we're actually actively following up on uh, the support that they requested. Uh, thank you. Um, right, so we've got Natasha and then Andrew, uh, and then we'll go on to uh, another question from Councillor Sidhu. Um, hi, regarding your last question about the bids and the smaller businesses, um, with newer businesses that are coming within Acton, we are going to be creating a welcome pack, which includes all the projects and services that we deliver to our big businesses, um, how we can help them set up their business before even starting their premises. So if we know who the occupier is, we knock on the door um, to see if they are up to date with everything, if they've got their waste contract um, set up, if they need pest control, um, if they need help with uh, communicating to the council. Um, we are firsthand, um, as soon as they get the keys of the premises. Um, so we are helping smaller businesses. In Acton, we had the opposite. We had struggles with the bigger businesses voting for the bid to come back in, but smaller businesses within Acton Town Centre found more beneficial um, having the bid there as they could see um, changes that have happened within the two years of the bid being, well, since I've been in the bid for the last two years, the changes that happen in the town centre um, and the services that they have been provided by the bid. Uh, thank you. And Andrew? So I've dropped into the chat a link to the Beneficial Loans Toolkit. Um, anything the council can do, or indeed you councillors can, can to help am amplify the, um, the, the the awareness of that resource, please, please do. Um, and as Fiona said, I mean, we're working side by side with officer colleagues um, in providing ongoing support to the businesses that have been um, through the Pioneers Fund. Um, and, you know, I, I'm constantly surprised at the businesses that don't yet know about what the University of West London um, has to offer. Um, we've got the, the the West London Food Innovation Centre at, um, at the university, which is hugely relevant to the 
to the food manufacturing business base um, in, in Park Royal, and of course Stevens and um, Westmont Enterprise Hub, where in fact we were able to locate one of those startups um, in, in the Pioneers Fund into the Enterprise Hub, um, so they were no longer running their, their expanding business from home. So many opportunities. Right, thank you very much. Uh, so now we'll take a question from Councillor Sidhu. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I just wanted to build upon one of uh, Councillor uh, Anand's questions, as well as your response, uh, Fiona, in regards to students being more involved within um, contributing to the local economy. Um, I myself was a student, um, I've just recently graduated, and I was one who did struggle trying to find a job um, mm -hmm. because it, the constant question of and the constant criticism you don't have enough experience mm. and I think that's we get into this kind of never-ending cycle where okay you'll apply for the job you don't have enough experience so you go through the same process again and again and again so my question is is there any way that either us councils or the council can help in terms of uh students gaining that experience or is it support that businesses require so we can encourage students to actually help within the local economy and contribute to the local economy because you'll find that myself I ended up then contributing to uh, outside of Ealing because that was a job that had actually had offered me um, a place and a role so is there any way that we can try and prevent that and in your expertise what would be the best way that we could support you as a council? Okay um Really good question and so relevant on many fronts for, for the challenges our, our businesses face with recruitment. Um, one of the things we've integrated into the UK Shared Prosperity Delivery Plans is opportunities for students in the university to gain experience, um, uh, get live experience to support their learning and development. Uh, and the media schools agreement about uh, videography content being created uh, as we de develop design proposals and implement improvements on the high street to, to record those activities and, and, and create social media content. Uh, so that's why we included that element in the, in the delivery plans to help maximize uh, employment opportunities uh, for students by giving them some live experience that will um, they can include in their CV. Um, there's a number of other um, faculties where we're exploring what that looks like as well uh, with, you know, and I think this is something we can probably scale up in partnership with the university uh, and also West London College is seeing how can we broker connections between businesses that might be looking for some skill and expertise and help and the university and the college has staff who can supervise um, the the student who's providing that support and you know it becomes uh, something to enhance their cv but also uh, maximize the value of learning by having that real life application um, i think there's lots of scope of looking at work placements um, visits to workplaces um, and, and also building that relationship between businesses and the university so they can understand uh, the caliber and range of courses being offered uh, and, and, you know, kind of create and, and set up taster experiences, um, short or longer uh, work placements and things like that. So I, I think there's plenty of scope for us to explore that in more detail and how we can scale those kind of opportunities up. Uh, thank you. And Andrew? Sure. One, just, one constraint I would flag, which I, I, I haven't yet found a solution to and I wel welcome ideas on, um, is the reality, of course, with so many more people working remotely, um, mm. locally, um, that means there's actually less capacity um, in the workplace to host um, young people, students um, on, on workplace visits or indeed extended work placements. Um, and, and that is a real challenge that we're up against. I think related to that, I think there's also a challenge now um, for employers once they've onboarded graduates in providing sufficient um, wraparound development support in the workplace. 
Um, and I think, you know, we need to be encouraging, we certainly are mem encouraging West, members of West London business to maximise the time that um, graduates and their line managers spend in an office environment um, or their, their progress development is likely to be slowed. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. And uh, Connor, please. Thank you, Chair. Just to elaborate a bit further on what Fiona and Andrew have said, I think leading by example is very important. I think the council is one of the biggest employers in, in Ealing. <laughs> And we need to do more in terms of actually getting more placements for graduates as well. And there is progress being made in that. In fact, I think next week, I'm going to welcome a graduate to the service for two weeks to uh, learn a bit more about the built environment profession and how they can actually maybe take, explore a journey into that sort of career pathway. I, if, we hadn't, if we had some of our employment and skills offices here right now, they probably would be able to give you a really uh, wholesome answer in this and some of the work that they are doing at the moment. So I'm going to take that away and, and liaise with them. So just platforms, you know, like such as work healing, learn healing, they'll be doing this, some, of work, some of this work already, but we can certainly ramp that up. And really, it's a really good question. I think we need to do more in that area, but let's make a record of that. And that's something I can pick up because I now lead the Employment and Skills Service as well, which we're going to integrate much more with the employment or economic development team that Fiona is currently leading. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so, um, so the final thing on this uh, report is to um, finalise the uh, recommendations. Um, so I think what I've what I've noted down is um, a recommendation for the council youth service to work with uh, Westmount Enterprise Hub to divert uh, to come up with some scheme to to divert young people at risk of coming to the attention of criminal justice system into entrepreneurship. I think did I capture that um, correctly, Stephen? You did, absolutely, yeah. Good, great. Uh, are we all happy with that as a recommendation? Yes, great, agreed. Um, so second one is to uh, recommend to Ealing Police um, that they put dedicated resource into um, town centre locations and also industrial estates, uh, was mentioned. Um, Our level of that. Well, yeah. Well, the West, I think West it's area of BC. Mayor. The mayor, okay. Um, well, I mean, we're talking specifically about Ealing, though, aren't we? Uh, if it was the mayor, then they'd be doing it right across London, which is uh, somewhat outside our jurisdiction. Um, probably a recommendation to West Area BCU, is it? I think, yeah. Uh, is everyone happy with that? Chair, can I say that the police do attend each of our high street task force meetings and to be fair they are looking at a number of plans it is the lack of officers that are available is mm. the biggest um key for them and if they had more officers available we are however and i'm meeting with them probably more regularly now to try and put a strategy together for each of our town centers or each of our seven towns to be honest um but again it's resources and until we get these new officers that are promised um, to the West area, um, it's going to be difficult. They are doing their best, but I appreciate that um, we do have an issue and our job is to try and make our town centres and high streets a safer place for people to come and shop and uh, and enjoy, but it is a work in progress. Um, yeah, so I mean, not, I'm not saying nothing's happening, but would that recommendation make sense? Because that seems to be, if that's flowing into the sort of thing that they're that they're doing then that's i'd agree that it's certainly a way forward um i think it's just further conversations that we need to have with our local police team to see just when these new recruits will come forward and more importantly when they'll be able to put these additional measures in place so it's a difficult one this because we don't have control of it. Well, no, we don't have control. It, it, yeah, I mean, it, well, it's we, we're encouraging we're encouraging the police. Um, yeah, I mean, so we, yeah, a re recommendation that we we encourage West Ealing PCU to put to put in place. So when 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 officers are available to put in place um, dedicated resource into. The town centres and industrial estates. Is that okay? I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the L7 it towns, was mentioned isn't it? by one of the. Um, it was mentioned by Grace, I think it was, that there's, a, there's an issue of um, women feeling unsafe in Park Royal, for instance. So, so that these the, the industrial You don't necessarily solve that by putting more police on the streets. You do improve, improve the situation by improving street lighting. I'm happy to have an additional recommendation about street lighting. I'm always happy to have that. <laughs> So yeah, okay. Well, we can okay. So make that just just town centre locations, but we can have a, uh, a a recommendation about improving uh, street lighting on industrial estates. No, 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 no. Well, it is because if, if it's encouraging businesses, it's within our remit. So, sorry, sorry, Councillor Nagpal. Um, if it's a specific issue with women's safety, we could work with the Violence Against Women and Girls team to see if they've got some ideas or some initiatives that they're already incorporating and we could maybe um, yeah, use the same sort of initiatives here yeah. as a recommendation. Okay, that sounds good. So that's broader than just street lighting. Yeah, work, work, work with they've got experience. lots of initiatives being rolled out that we could, you know, take advantage of. Yeah, that sounds good. You got that, yeah. We, we agree to agree to that. Just to chair, just to recognise what, um, just to recognise what Councillor Martin has said and what Councillor Nagpal has said. Um, maybe we can incorporate the word continue communications where they are continuous, where they are doing so, rather than saying recommending. We continuing communications and what and follow up with what Councillor Nagpal has said. So we merge the two things together. Okay. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yes, Yeah, okay. So so Harjit's put just pointed out um there'll be a crime and disorder um scrutiny panel next year. So we could recommend that they look at the these these issues. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah that makes perfect sense. Good. Um right, so right now we get to reading my writing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so another recommendation to the police that they work with retailers to, um, to to point out that FPNs can be used for low level shoplifting, because I think that's something that we heard. There's a, there's a view amongst retailers that the, the police aren't interested for low level shoplifting, and actually, what the police are saying is that they there are there are maybe make it broader than FPNs, but. For the, for, the, for the police to reach out to to retailers and explain how they can help with with problems of shoplifting, Councillor Young. I don't think it's the police that aren't interested. It's the businesses that aren't interested. They won't take action if it's below a certain uh, price point. Well, what, what we heard on the the Any Broadway Centre site visit was that certainly the, the the manager understood that the police wouldn't come out if it was less than one hundred and fifty pounds. And when I talked to the police, they said. That's not the case, it, but um, below a, a lower threshold, they'd be more likely to deal with it by an FPN than a, a prosecution. So I think there's a there's a misunderstanding between. I think there's the a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because the businesses won't prosecute if it's less than a certain amount. Therefore, the police don't get involved if they won't prosecute. What can they do? Well, no, as I say, but the, that's the point I'm making is that uh, the FPN route doesn't require the businesses to go to court, so it's a way of. I, I think I think shopping. the recommendation ought to um, concentrate on on a wider uh, series of, uh, of, of measures, and you ought to think about uh, a strategy for community safety in the town centres. Should be the officers should develop a strategy together with the police and the bids. Um. Yeah. What do what what do other what do other members think? Is that too broad or is that are other members happy with that? Um, uh, I think I think it comes back to putting the strategy together, and I think it's going to be down to the police who, once they've got enough numbers to be able to provide, I suppose, each and every one of our town centres a guarantee as such as to what they can and what they cannot do. You know, we hear this week in, week out, unfortunately, 
the the biggest, I suppose, the highest uh, number of issues that are related, believe it or not, are at the end of a school term where we've got more antisocial behaviour from local school children causing havoc through the town centre is what was recently um, noted. We do, or they do have a schools officer who does visit the school. Um, however, that's just one small part of it. Um, it is, that's the petty theft that's going on across all our seven towns. So it's, it's about putting a strategy together that they could commit to, not just for us to sort of try and work out what can and cannot be done at this level. Sorry, um, Councillor Ball, you, you were on mute, but I roughly read your lips to say Councillor Siddick. Um, it's not a at all. Um, I just, just to build upon what Councillor Young had said, I think this stems into a wider issue in the sense that the increase in petty theft is due to the cost of living crisis. Families are struggling right now to feed their families. So it becomes into quite a, a bigger picture in that sense. Um, and it's then maybe a way of then turning this negative into a positive. What can businesses maybe do with any leftover food that is there available at the end of the day? What are we doing then to help with that extra food excess? Can we find a way of uh, giving it to those families that are all struggling? Um, it's trying to find ways of trying to help those who are struggling at the moment. And you'll find it is a lot of those families who are on borderline and they are struggling to make ends meet what are we doing to try and counteract that at the moment so yes I can understand petty theft is on the rise and I've seen it for myself multiple times and but it's also what are we now doing to try and just prevent it entirely and maybe the way going forward is right if they're stealing I don't know like a sandwich out of a shop that's a pound fifty Okay, so at the end of the day, you've got still thousands of sandwiches that are still left on the shelf. What can then we do? Can they be um, given at a lower price or can they actually just be given to uh, families that are in need and saying, well, at this time, this is when we've got leftover food. It will expire today. However, this is now an option. So another way of looking at that was the too good to go app. There's businesses who have invested in that and it allows them to sell certain items that might go off in the day but at a very reduced and local price so is there a way that we could try and integrate that with a recommendation that we would put forward uh thank you i i'm i'm inclined to think that's sort of moving away a bit from uh from our remit it's a bit kind of indirect really isn't it um it's, it's not people who are struggling to, to to make ends meet um the example we were given was the uh, schoolboy who came in stole 30 sandwiches so they could flog them onto his mates at school that's a very typical example. Well, that, that's right. And, and we were also given examples of uh, shoplifters who were challenged and then became violent, which, again, isn't fitting in with, you know, people who are doing it out of necessity. Uh, but, yeah, I, so I, I don't... And, yes, and Harjeet has reminded me that Scrutiny Panel 1 is looking at tackling the cost of living crisis. So if there were... Well, if it was work in that direction, it would probably be that would be for them, not not for us. Uh, so, are we are we agreed on uh, what's what? Have you got the wording down for the strategy one? So work work yeah. So 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 work working with the police and the and the bids to to formulate a, a strategy uh, for um, dealing with. Um, Prime and ASB in the town centres. Yes, because strategy might persuade all the businesses to agree to prosecute whatever the level of theft and the police to attend whatever the level of theft and have a zero to tolerance policy, and that might make a real difference. Yeah. Okay. So we're agreed on that. We may disagree on what the strategy ought to be, but we agreed on that recommendation. Good. Um, and yeah, I captured. Um, Yeah, so um, the council to um, highlight uh, companies in the borough that are accredited to uh, provide car zero, zero carbon services such as heat pump installation uh, in order to encourage more local businesses to get accredited. That was from Fiona, and I think that's 
sensible recommendation. Yeah, wording, you can't recommend companies. Well, highlight was what I said. I mean, I think you can you can list them rather than um, yeah. You can't actually recommend. You can't endorse them, but you, you can't endorse you can them. Yeah, just saying. Be careful them. with the wording. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Everyone, mm. everyone happy with that? And raise, then, raise awareness. Maybe. Yes. yes. Uh, and and the final one that I've oh, well no sort of two there. so there's. Um, Yeah, um, so this was one um, I thought of um, quite quite a lot of what we heard tonight um, was about a lot of uh, services which which are available to businesses uh, that a lot of businesses aren't necessarily aware of. Uh, so I was thinking uh, the council to provide um, information um, about the, the various the various services that we've heard tonight um, with the. Um, the business rate uh, bills to to all local businesses. Um, what's that? Uh, yeah, so um, we we can we can list them specifically, but the the, the, the various um, different initiatives that we've we've heard about tonight, um, the council to um, publicise them to local businesses through the business rates um, literature so so you know send them out to all to all businesses when they communicate to all businesses I mean. yeah, i'm not sure chair whether we, we could do it through the business right i'd suggest possibly something on the website might be um a better recommendation or it could just be that um as we move forward as a task force we can sort of certainly look at advertising um, those particular businesses via our bid teams um, and our other uh, stakeholders. Yeah. So how about yeah? So just take out the bit about the business rates demands and and just the the council to publicise and we can you know, we can list the, the the services that we've talked about tonight. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Fine. And then uh, finally, um, there was uh, Connor, Connor. You were you were talking about a recommendation right at the end, weren't you? Um, yeah. It was picking up on Councillor Sadu's question around what more can the council be doing in the space of ensuring younger people, maybe graduates, getting work placements. I think Fiona made a really good point as well about the fact we've got 19,000 businesses within Ealing, but only 400 of those are taking up those opportunities to host uh, graduates or work placements. Uh, age neutral as well, obviously, as, as Fiona alluded to earlier. There's probably a lot of work of this going on already in the employment skills service. So I'll take that away, but let's let's commit to enhancing that or, yeah. or maybe integrating it more across different services and teams and bringing more awareness to the wider England business community as well. I think that'll be a good way of uh, enhancing that. Okay. We Are we happy with, yes, boosting work placements, essentially encouraging more businesses to take advantage of work placements, yeah. Yeah, good. Chair, I have to say the one of the most recent um, job fairs at West London University was very well attended, and um, to be honest, I think opened opened a lot of doors to a lot of uh, youngsters across this borough who weren't aware that jobs that the jobs were available. So um, well done to all those in the jobs team on that. Yes, very good. Um, do any any members have any additional recommendations? Uh, yes, I can send that Um Just, I, I found Natasha's um, presentation really interesting about the business improvement districts. And I think there's a lot of businesses in my ward that would be interested in joining one. And I don't think the information about how to join one or how to start one in your area is circulated enough. So um, with your recommendation about circulating these initiatives, maybe an emphasis on, on how to join a, um, a bid or, or start one for the local businesses in your area. Uh, yes, um, so I think within that recommendation, yeah, we could um, provide information about the existing bids, and we could also provide some, uh, put some, have some information on the website about how businesses can come together and start the process of forming a bid if they're in an area that doesn't have one. Um, I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, just as part of that, as part of that recommendation. Recommendation is that they could also come forward and talk to us on the High Street Task Force. Absolutely. It might be a better recommendation. You, you, you don't join a, a bid. You're either in the district or you're outside the district. No, no, that's right. But what I mean is if they're outside it, 
um, we could have something on the website about what what businesses can do to to come together and set one up. If yeah. you know, like a yeah. you know, yeah, you don't bid. set up a new bid. But if you're on, just outside the area of a bid, you can't say I'd like to join that. It doesn't work like that. The the uh, the the limits of the bid are specified in in the original establishment of the bid. No, that's right. Absolutely, but I mean, if if businesses are somewhere that they're in a different centre, that you know they're in North Holt or something, they're in then somewhere that's not a current bid. Um, there could be some information on the website to, you know, encourage them to get together. Yeah. So, 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 so I say thank you very much to um, everyone that's, that's presented. That the final thing that we need to do uh, is to quickly look at the. Um, uh, the, the the draft um final report um so we're not going to obviously we're not going to go through it page by page uh, i need to write uh the introduction and uh, haji needs to add in uh what we've discussed uh today um but do do we have any comments by members on the the content of the draft report yes i can see councillor young uh, I've turned to the recommendations at the back as being the most sensible thing. Um, and I'm concerned about one or two of the recommendations. Recommendation two, um, there's no explanation of why um, the uh, five-year employment history checks are undertaken for Heathrow. Is that a security matter? Uh, actually, it's good that you brought this one up because we one thing we found on one of the site visits was that in fact, the um, the five year history check is not as um, hard line as we thought it was. Um, so I think it's it's more of a question. I think it'd be helpful to amend that recommendation to um, to be more about communications. I mean, so the the issue is, in a nutshell, that people think that they can't work at the airport if they don't have five-year employment history and a huge number of people particularly because of covid um have, have gaps in their employment history um but what we found um on one of the i think councillor martin's nodding uh what we found on the uh, site visit to um the uh, job fair at uwl when we talked to the heathrow people there was that in fact it's not an absolute rule and they can make exceptions for um reasonable um circumstances so um so this is probably more of a recommendation to to Heathrow Airport to clarify their um, their, their rules on employment history checks. Actually, um, I think that's really where it goes because because that's the issue is that there's a that misunderstanding stops people apply. So, so Heathrow are short of people and people are put off from employ from. Um, applying because they think they they won't they won't qualify when actually they they are allowed. So I think we could we could amend that recommendation too to be instead of a recommendation to the government to be a recommendation to Heathrow to um, to better communicate their rules about employment history checks. Clarify, Clarify their rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, good. Um, recommendation one. Oh, sorry, put your mic on, please. Yeah. Recommendation one. Um, we appear to be saying, carry on doing what we're doing, but do it slightly better. And it doesn't seem to be very much of a recommendation. Uh, I, I think it's imp it, the communication is important and um, improving it is a good thing. I think also we should bear in mind that... Um, these recommendations were all agreed by the panel at, at the, the meetings. You know, so at the end of the meetings, we've been agreeing recommendations. Yes, but in the, in the, in the, in the light of uh, <laughs> the day, you, you may change your mind. I'm just saying it's, it's a bit of a non nonsense recommendation. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't say anything. Do what you're doing. Do it better if you can. It's, it's a wishy-washy waste of, waste of space. I mean, it's not... Yes, you can tell me specifically what you want them to do better. How they're going to do it? I, it's not. It's not the most incisive recommendation, but I, I think it is still worthwhile. I mean, what what do other members think? Do we want to get rid of this, or do we want to keep it? Keep it, Councillor Renan says. <laughs> we 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 we're, uh, 
non-party mutual basis here. Okay, I think there was a majority to keep it. Um, any other any other comments on um, anything in that anything in the, the draft report? Not seeing anyone. No, good, great. Okay, well, um, do, do, do we need to formally? Oh yes, well we do. Don't we? we need to formally agree. Uh, let me find the wording. Ah, thank you. Uh, so the panel is asked to uh, consider and agree the draft report and to grant delegated authority to the overview and scrutiny officer in consultation with the chair and vice chair to amend the final report for submission to the overview and scrutiny committee and thereafter to cabinet. So do we agree that? Agreed. Good. Thank you very much. Um, so that brings us to the end of the meeting. I'm sorry it's gone on a little bit uh, past nine o'clock, but uh, thank you um, very much to all the um, uh, all the members of the panel and to um, all our our, our um, guest speakers uh, for a very very in interesting informative um, discussion tonight, um, and um, also to um, everyone on the who's been on the site visits and so on. We've met during the course of the the, the, the year's panel. Um, so thank you very much to everyone, and that concludes the meeting. Thank you. Let me thank Harjit as well. He's yeah. done a wonderful job. Absolutely. Sorry, how can I forget you? Yes, thank you very much, Harjit, for supporting me um, so well. Yes, thank you. Yep. Um, Chair, um, I echo what you've said, and I will also thank you for doing the synergy very well on this site. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.